Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and <clears throat> today we're going to talk about a patient of mine and a good friend by the name of Chris. And I'm going to tell you Chris's story and it's going to resonate with a lot of you. So Chris is a, a man kind of halfway through his life and um, he's a buddy of mine but also a patient and he called me in a flat panic one day. And he said, dude, I've got a splitting headache. I can't think. I can't open my eyes. It's not a migraine. And I checked my blood pressure. and It's 190 over 110. Malignant hypertension. And I said, oh my God, Chris, we've got to get that down. And I prescribed, immediately prescribed medications for him. I sent him to the ER, making sure he doesn't have an arrhythmia, doesn't have uh, any problems. And long story short, he went into the ER. They checked him out top to bottom and um, we're able to bring his blood pressure down with massive doses of powerful blood pressure medication. And this just came kind of out of nowhere. He'd been fairly healthy, um, no health issues, just this massive, massive rapid spike of, of blood pressure. And Chris does have um, an intensity about him. He does have an adrenal override. So it was probably uh, some adrenaline effect that overrode this. But in the ensuing weeks, we, we had him on the blood pressure medication. He checked his blood pressure, very fastidious about checking his pressure. And we did every test known to mankind. We did CT scans of his brain to make sure there were no tumors, CT scans of his chest and his belly and MRIs. He saw a cardiologist. He had every test done, had a CAC score done, goose egg, no plaque. Um, he went to see the cardiologist, did a nuclear stress test, did echoes, no nothing, normal, 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 but this paroxysmal massive hyper, uh, uh, hypertension, malignant stroke level hypertension, no adrenal tumors, no other tumors that could cause this, all the usual suspects, all the hormonal things, nothing there. And as a metabolic physician, obviously, um, we did the blood work, and, and his blood work was quite amazing. It was really cool. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of his early blood work with you. So uh, MRI, no issues. But blood work shows an elevated ferritin. Now, ferritin is a marker of intracellular inflammation. We commonly saw that was with COVID. His ferritin is significantly elevated. Spurious number. All his iron indices, everything else is fine. Um, testosterone levels through the roof, fine. He's not on testosterone supplement. No issue there, which tells me this may not be an insulin issue, but it may be. His lipid numbers, absolutely fine. Uh, triglycerides, slightly elevated at 106, but not horrible. HDL, good. Um, LDL, high, which is good by me. Triglycerides, a little bit low. So he does eat some carbohydrates. CRP, C-reactive protein, another inflammatory marker. Not awful, but higher than I would want to see it. Um, 2.6. I want to see that below one typically. Blood sugar, 85. Normal. Completely normal. Now, Chris is probably carrying about 20 or 30 extra pounds. BUN a little bit low. Tells me not enough protein. More, a little bit more carbohydrate rich diet. Kidney function, absolutely fine. Kidneys are not a cause for his hypertension. Electrolytes are good. Calcium is good. Liver function, pretty darn good. Hemoglobin A1C, diabetes number. I expected this to be higher. 4.8 zero diabetes, zero risk of cardiovascular disease based on blood sugar. No issue there. As we go through the numbers, gamma glutamate transferase, liver inflammation, a little high, uric acid, completely normal, no fructose issues. Um, thyroid numbers, perfect. Blood numbers, CBC, white count a little high together with that higher ferritin, markers of mild inflammation, but otherwise complete normal. Urine clean, no ketosis though. Um, insulin and C-peptide, pretty darn normal with that A1C. So not profoundly insulin resistant. So why the devil does he have this hyper, hyper paroxysmal hypertension? Because we could find absolutely no cause. If you're trying to go from two mad to OMAD, two meals a day to one meal a day, and you're struggling at lunchtime, pop one of these babies in. As you know, you never want to white knuckle your way through a fast to a 48 hour fast. There are times when I'm really dragging, particularly if I'm not in ketosis, that's when I'll use a ketone IQ to rapidly promote a ketogenic bloodstream. The time I most struggle is in the evening when I'm about to have dinner, but I don't want to have dinner and I'll hit one of these guys, but I strongly, strongly support ketone IQ to help you through your fasting. Now we come into a little bit of theory. So the first theory is that <clears throat> there are two forms of hypertension. 
The first form of hypertension, the commonest one that's described, is so-called essential hypertension. What the word essential means, we don't know what the hell is causing this, but it's high and you need to be on medication. I'm going to put you on this medication and you're going to be on it for life. Okay? And that's what happens. And a lot of you out there are taking blood pressure medication because your blood pressure is elevated. The medication may or may not be working fairly well. Remember, a normal blood pressure is around 110 over 60, 110 over 70. 120 over 80 is the accepted normal, but it's normal on a standard American diet, which is already elevated. And then for me, anything above 135 over 85 and certainly 140 over 90 is treatable with medication with the ideal of having your blood pressure 135 over 85 or lower. And when you check your blood pressure, if it's higher than that, don't do a whole bunch of breathing exercise to bring it down because what your body is seeing is that high number. Okay, so back to Chris. So we talk, Chris comes in, I say, look, dude, you're doing well, but you 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 need to drop a little bit of weight. I'd like to see 20 or 30 pounds off you. I'd like to see you eat less carbohydrate, eat more meat, and I'd like you to start being physically active. And Chris takes that to heart, and he's gung-ho about it. So Chris is out there. When I drive to work in the morning, Chris and his wife are out there walking their 5K every day religiously. I mean, it is, it's Florida, so the weather's pretty good. But every morning, Chris is out there doing his exercise. He changes his diet. He goes pretty much carnivore, keto carnivore, but he's not eating carbohydrates. He starts to drop some weight, starts to do really well, and everything improves in his blood work, but his blood pressure is still through the roof. Now, Chris is on two, three medications. I've got him on aspirin. Even though his heart's absolutely fine, I don't want him to drop a clot. So um, the aspirin is neither here nor there, but I've got him on metropol, I've got him on lisinopril, I've got him on blood pressure. I'm not a, 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 a cardiac doctor, but the cardiologist, the keto cardiologist that saw him, agreed completely with the blood pressure regimen. I started him out of emergency, but this is what the cardiologist wanted him on. And yes, yeah, sometimes it would control his pressure, sometimes it wouldn't. Chris is averse to medication, but he checked his blood pressure all the time. And certainly when his pressures were abnormal, and they were often abnormal, and not just eh, through the roof high dangerously high. I said, Chris, dude, we worry about a stroke. And I saw a paper, I knew about this, and I knew in my own practice that I was doing this already off-label. But there, was a, there were a couple of papers, a couple of papers that talked about the use of a particular medication that treats insulin resistance, which is known very well for weight loss and for diabetes management, that specifically treats in a proven peer-reviewed study way, significantly lowers blood pressure. And I'd been trying to convince Chris to use this medication. No, I don't want to. I'm afraid of it. I don't. It's got all this bad. And, and absolutely right. It's got all this bad. And I said, Chris, dude, listen, number one, your blood pressure is life-threatening. You're too young to die now. Number two is you've already made all the investment in diet and exercise in terms of improving the side effects of this medication. So you're not going to experience the side effects. Let's start it. Let's do an experiment. Let's use it for 90 days and let's see what your blood pressure is. Well, this morning I get a phone call from Chris. I hadn't seen him for a while. I've been traveling. He's been busy. I know he's been doing his thing. He picks up the, uh, the, I pick up the phone and he says to me, dude, it's 90 days. I said, oh, really? That fast already? He said, guess what my blood pressure is? I said, I don't know. He said, it's 110 over 60 this morning. I said, yeah, but what is it all? He says, I haven't used medication for almost two months. Within a month of starting this medication, his blood pressure normalized to real normal, not fat American normal, 120 over 80, 110 over 60, 110 over 70, off medication. He weaned himself off. He has not used medication. Plus, he dropped 20 pounds. He dropped 20 pounds, he's eating right, he's still exercising, he's still losing weight. What's the medication? Ozempic, GLP-1 agonist. And we know that from, from a study perspective and from my practice over the last five to seven years, GLP-1s treat insulin resistance and insulin resistance is the primary disease that causes metabolic hypertension. It also contributes to plaque disease in the heart, contributes to diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, a spectrum of diseases. 
But from a cardiovascular perspective, insulin, at least uh, um, treating insulin resistance with GLP-1 agonists and that class of incretin drugs radically improves cardiovascular risk far better than a statin according to the select trial. And these two papers that have now been published right here, these two papers categorically have proven that GLP-1s reduce blood pressure hypertension that is resistant to medical therapy, or if you're stranded on medical therapy despite doing what you're doing. Now, that was where they were using GLP-1s. In these studies, they used GLP-1s as isolated medications. They didn't modify the diet. And even there, it worked really well. The problem is the rebound once you stop using the GLP-1s. But Chris is now weaning himself off the GLP-1s, and guess what? Because his insulin resistance has been treated, he's insulin sensitive, it's highly likely that his metabolic hypertension, not his essential hypertension, but his metabolic hypertension, is going to stay away. And if he has alternative valves to blow off steam, he's unlikely to continue to be a hypertensive. He's still got the medication as a backup. But while in the ketogenic space, all you hear about is, oh, this side effect, this muscle wasting, gas bloat, constipation, bad, bad, bad. This guy did everything right. He did everything better than 90% of my patients and still couldn't fix his hypertension. That is the indication for a GLP-1. You don't start, you don't lead with this medication like so many doctors are. You lead with a behavioral change and you add in this medication. And I will fight verbally with every one of my colleagues that demonizes this medication because I use it in my practice extremely effectively. And here's a case report of exactly that. And there are several more that I've used it for cardiovascular uh, uh, disease reduction. But on top of dietary change, not in lieu of. And we in the ketogenic community have to get this right, folks. Because if we come out on the wrong side of GLP-1s, and I can tell you the narrative, the experimental narrative is more and more and more of these medications by pharma. I'm not certain I agree with that, but they're doing tons of experiments, not because they believe in the healthcare, but because they believe in the money. But these drugs work. And I'm asking you, leave comments in the comment section. Oh, I'll never use this stuff. Well, would you rather die of hypertension? Would you rather have that stroke? If you are bashing this medication, it's because you haven't been sick enough to need it, despite how well you're doing. And you know what? If you're doing a ketogenic diet, if you're carnivore, if you're doing great, you don't need the medication. I agree completely. I would never have prescribed that stuff for him. But when you need it, don't be afraid of it because it really works. And do the experiment. And if it doesn't work or if it's miserable, after a few weeks, stop the medication. And Chris had to pay out of pocket. His insurance company wouldn't pay for it. And fortunately, he had the means to pay for it. But what is the cost of your life? And I'm adamant that in the ketogenic space, this medication has a defined place, despite how my colleagues demonize it on the internet. Leave comments. Let's debate this. I save lives for a living. No, I don't. I help people to save their own lives. And if this is a tool I can use in a beneficial way, I'll fight everybody that tries to take it away from me or argue against me. Am I opinionated? Hell yes. Do I care about my patients? Hell yes. I am the carb addiction doc. If you like what we're talking about, throw a buck at our PayPal account, at our Patreon account. Um, the details are in the show notes. If you want to consult, if you're having trouble yourself, and not just to, I want to be on a GLP-1. If you want the entire package, with or without the medication, give us a shout. Text us, WhatsApp us, call us, 561-517-0642, anywhere across the world. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If I've made you think, I've made you question your certain beliefs, I've done my job.